Sam, what is that uh, hyper whatchamacallit? Why? What do you want to know for? You really care? Of course I care. But if you don't want to tell me, I won't press you. Mm -hmm. You're pressing yourself, Heim. You're going to press yourself right into a heart attack, a bad one. Now, will you sit down, please, huh? So, I don't have to smoke. You don't have to do a lot of things. Like work. What for? You're 73 years old. Not yet. You're 73. You said that. You didn't hear me. 73 is a nice age to shoot for when you're my age. But once you're there, once you've made it, it's too young not to enjoy. You know what I mean, enjoy? Sam, I'm a businessman. I've been a businessman all my life. I take great pride in it. I find it very enjoyable. A lot more enjoyable than playing checkers in the park. And a lot more dangerous. Danger? You talk about danger? Did you ever play checkers with those old thieves in the park? Like barracudas will take your arm over the elbow. You stay away from them, so will I. What, what, what are you writing? What's that? Pills. Only if you need them. All right. I'll find a nice, cool place for them where they'll keep a long, long time. Mm. Will you do me a favor, Heim? Will you take care of yourself? Watch out, that king is going to jump your man in the corner, Max. Every day you come by and stick your nose in and ruin a perfectly good checker game. Now stop, Watson. Sit down and play a game with us. I don't trust you older people. I know you'll take advantage of me. Besides, my grandson's taking care of the store. If I sit around here, I'll be out of business by 2 o'clock.
they found that we were through with all the little lies in the downtown aggravations that we traded them away for a quiet country day that we had hoped to share would they try to find out where we were for you today. I want you to move that machine out of there. Blocking your sign again, huh? You have a permit to build here, not in front of my store. Look, Haim, I've explained all that to you before. It's just not that easy to move those things. Where would we put it? Don't ask. I'm warning you, next time I call the police. What about my offer? Come on. What do you say? What I always say to you, Remus, nothing. What did I offer you the last time? 25,000? Make it 26. All right, twist my arm. 26,5. What do you say to that? Get your lousy crane away from the front of my store. Be reasonable, will you? We both know that place of yours is doomed. We haven't seen four people walk in there today. Counting you and the boy. At least my way, you'd be getting something out of it. Relax and begin to enjoy life a little. What makes you think I'm not enjoying life? Okay, okay, we've been all through that. But I just wonder how long this masquerade of youth will go on. You're no spring chicken, you know. One of these days, you're going to wise up like the rest of the people around here who sold out when they had a chance. We'll talk about it then. My boy, you have a lot to learn. Someday you're going to sell this place to a conglomerate, and they're going to put you away in a big, plush office with nothing to do. And then mandatory retirement at the age of 64 years, 11 months, and 28 days, and then you'll know. Well, listen, I don't... Old age is a state of mind, something to which I have not yet allowed myself to fall victim. That will happen on the day when I finally do sell my place, or when I fail to enjoy the look on your face every time I turn you down. I am. I'll see that the crane stays out of your way. All right. Put it someplace convenient, like across town.
You need any help? What are you offering? What do you need? Bath towels, a fast current. Bath towels. All right. Let's see. No, three hundred and sixty. Just wanted to see you do it. <laughs> How's business while I was gone? Booming. Three construction workers came in to use the phone. That's good. Now I'm running a telephone service. Did we get any calls? No, but Remus was here. You already had the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Remus. You told him off again, didn't you? Next time you let one of those robots in here, I'm going to stick an oil can in his ear. It's two dozen cotton twill. I don't understand you, Hyam. This place is dying a slow death, and you pass up a chance to get out with a bundle. It's a matter of the principle involved. What principle? What's the difference, as long as there is a principle involved? I don't understand. Well, I'll take this store, for instance. It's not exactly Macy's, but it's mine. It makes me a living and makes me feel good. Macy's is the same thing about his store. Three dozen damask. How do you compare yourself to him? Why not? It makes me feel good. Here, I'll make you feel good, too. I'll compare you to Jerry West. My jump shot's not as good as Jerry West. <laughs> My store isn't as good as Macy's. <laughs> People, you don't know a thing about how these people feel. You're tearing Doug and Heim apart. Don't you understand that? I'm not tearing anybody apart, Mr. Fox. Mr. Malsh did not adopt the boy. Legally, he has no claim on Doug. When his son and daughter-in-law were killed, he should have notified us immediately. He didn't. The adoption proceedings weren't finalized when they died. Doug automatically became our responsibility. Yes, again. I understand that. But... I've written to him three times. He hasn't answered me yet. I went into the files and I found your name. I'm sorry if it was an inconvenience for you to make this trip, but we thought his lawyer should know about it. We're going to have to take the boy away. Or just like that? Just like what? The agency should have been notified a year ago. I told him to, after the accident. I, I thought he did. I thought it was all settled. Unfortunately, it's not settled. Look. I was wrong. I made a big mistake. Now, what are we going to do about it? Nothing. I don't say nothing. We're talking about something very important here. I'm very well aware of that. Heim has made a home for the boy, a good home. Mr. Fox, a man cannot just walk in here and take one of the children, no matter what kind of a home he intends to give him. That's why we have an adoption agency. There are hundreds of environmental and sociological factors to be considered. I'm quite well Not aware of the Not the least of which are the standards of age and health. And Mr. Mall scores very poorly on both. And how do you score emotion? Uh, what's the accepted standards on Doug's feelings when you take him away? I'm not trying to suggest that this is easy. It never is. But all of this doesn't change anything. We are taking the boy away and returning him to the custody of the agency. Hopefully we'll be able to place him again very soon. I'll expect to see them at the home on Saturday. I'm sorry it had to happen. Oh, lady, you made your point. So what if it sticks a couple of people and lets a little blood run? just the store. It's the way the whole thing is handled. Look at them. No room for a gentleman, a person with feelings, a person with manners. This is what our friend Remus lacks. Him and his lousy cranes. Uh, enough of my problems. What about you, huh? Tonight is your night Wednesday. What do you want to do? Eh, why don't we just go home? What's at home? Let's go someplace nice. Bowling. <laughs> Miniature golf. I tell you what, we'll take a boat out in MacArthur Park. All the things you want to do. It's my night, but it's always what you want to do. I can't help but I like those things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's your night. 
All right, don't forget, okay? I said it's your night. Uh-oh. This calls for a little strategy. Right. <clears throat> For. The best parts are all in the second half. If the best part is in the second half, I'm glad I'm sitting out here. Go, go, go back and enjoy it. I can't enjoy it with you out here. And I can't enjoy it with me in there. Six people, I counted them, six people shot in the first 20 minutes. Don't they make pictures anymore when nobody gets killed? But it's real. You call that real? It's authentic. So is the Chicago fire, but I'm glad I wasn't there. I gotta go. It's my night, remember? I remember. All right. All right. Damn. Well, how about some ice cream? No. Some popcorn? You're stalling. With butter? You're still stalling. You're right. What'd we get? Just the usual. Bills, some shopping coupons, and a magazine. Throw them up. Can I keep the magazine? I like to see what's going on on the outside. What do you mean the outside? Who are you, George Rapp? After 13 years in an orphanage almost, you begin to pick up certain ways of talking. Well, you can drop them, George. You're out now. Sure, it's pleasant, whatever you have to say. <laughs> Just talking to you is a pleasure. Nonsense. Nothing can be that serious. <laughs> Why do I have to hear it now? Look, Jay, if there is a problem, there's an answer and you'll come up with it. It's... Oh. No, I'm not alone. Doug is here. Of course he's here. All right, tomorrow is fine. You'll, you'll drop around and, uh, and tell me what you come up with. Good. All right. All right, don't worry. Will you stop worrying? All right, Jay. Fine. It's a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye. What do you want? Uh, nothing important. You know lawyers. If there's no problem, they'll invent one. You getting ready for bed? Something the matter. Doug, come here. Come here. In here. Now, <clears throat> I listen and you talk if you want.
Hello, I. You wouldn't happen to be a customer by any chance, uh, or you're just looking around. That's right. Sorry. You remind me of somebody I used to know, uh, Jay Fox. Uh, not too good looking. Moved to Seattle, doesn't even call anymore. <laughs> How you been? Uh, fine, the same, in shape like always. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you? Well, I'm in trouble. Yeah, that's what I think you tried to tell me on the phone last Oh, I told you, I told you. You just wouldn't listen. No, I was listening. I just didn't think there was any sense in, in crying wolf when you didn't have to. Not until you put that good brain of yours to work. Yeah, some brain. You uh, get any mail from the adoption board? No, was I supposed to? They sent three letters. I didn't see them. I can tell you what they said. If you want, go ahead. They want Doug. I want Doug. You didn't notify anybody when Cheryl and Joe were killed. Hmm? It was nobody's business. I could take care of Doug. I did take care of Doug. I mean, it's not that simple. Why not? Because legally, he's not yours. The boy lives here. That's possession, so you know the percentages are in my favor. All right, will you stop it? They're going to take the kid. No, you stop it. Better yet, tell them to stop it. The boy lives here just like me. Jay, you tell them that. It can't be that hard. And stop acting like a pallbearer. Please, Jay, do it for me. God knows what's right is right. So what's the problem? It's no problem. I'm... explains why I haven't been getting my mail. You must have known I would have found out sooner or later. I guess I thought that as long as you didn't know, then it really couldn't be true. Pretty stupid. It's stupid, all right. So now we both know. They say you don't have to be back until Saturday. What's your rush? I'm not going back, period. What do you hope to accomplish? Nothing. Then why? It's a matter of the principle involved. What principle? It doesn't matter as long as there's a principle involved. Doug. You ought to read some of the garbage in these letters. Looking out for the child's best interest. A proper environment. You got any idea what that place is really like? I mean, really? Where are you planning to go? North. Canada. I could pass for 18. Almost. I'll find work. Why not Mexico? It's closer. I can't speak Spanish. Canada's a long walk. This'll get me there. You're sure? What about at night when it's cold? What about food? What about money? What do you expect to eat? Roots? Don't worry, I'll manage. Don't worry. It's a tall order. Don't worry. Why don't you tell me don't laugh, don't sleep? What about me? Don't I get a chance to see what I can do about it? There's nothing anybody can do. How can you be so certain? Well, what can you do? Do I have to audition? How long? Tomorrow, same time as now. Okay. It's a question of a home. The boy even has his own room. There's no lock on the refrigerator. He even picks what we watch on TV. <laughs> and clothes, he has a whole store full. And love, understanding, discipline, maybe too much. 
Except the discipline. Now you understand. There's no reason to move the boy. I would have thought you'd already explained it to him, Mr. Fox. No. You tell him. No, please. Let me hear it from your own lips why I'm not fit to raise the boy. Well, essentially, it's this, Mr. Malt. Suppose we did authorize the adoption. What if you became ill and couldn't provide for the boy? Or worse, what if he had to provide for you? Why should that happen? Because you're over 70 years old, sir, and that makes you prone to certain disabilities. Just being alive puts you in danger. I don't understand this attitude that judges a man on the probability of the years in front of him. When the years behind is what really counts, they really represent him at the time he's talking to you. Which would be a valid case if you were 40, but not when you're over 70. Exactly 73. It's all written down there. Why can't you say it? 73. And in good health. Not in good health. What do you mean? Because you still run a business, and you refuse to follow your doctor's orders, increasing the very risks I'm talking about. You've been listening to Sam. He exaggerates everything. Well, he's your doctor. You listen to him. Everybody's ready for a wheelchair. Unfortunately, we have to listen to him. Well, don't. Listen to me. I feel fine. I know how I feel. I feel good. Mr. Malsh, we've examined your case quite extensively. You could have a heart attack, become an invalid at any time, even die. I'm sorry, but we simply cannot justify placing any child in your care. I'm not your enemy. Miss Howard, I... You see, the, the boy trusts me. He's been happy for over a year. Tell me the truth. Can you guarantee anything better? I'm sorry. See, with the boy, we, we do all right together. We, he and I, we make out all right. We do things our own way. I have a lot of years left with him, if you leave us alone. But if you take him away, I don't know what's left. I mean, nothing. Nothing's left. There's reality, Mr. Marsh. I'm afraid you're going to have to learn to accept it. Tell me something. How old are you? Well, I don't see what the... No, please tell me. I'm 27. You have children, maybe? No. Miss Howard, I have lived through enough reality to fill your life three times over. The worst kinds of reality. War, death, depression, old age. Now I would like something else. Some medicine a little easier to take. Favor. Of course I will. When the boy gets here, you explain to him. Try to make him understand why he's better off without Hein. Hi. Hein, let me give you a ride home. No, no. I'll walk. You go. Hey, we'll go someplace. Have a couple of beers, turn back the clock a little. What do you say? No. Come on, why not? You heard me. Yeah, I heard you. You sure? I'm not sure about anything.
Hey, mister. What? This the place? Yes, my place. Please, please. I'm not so old. I have to be helped up like an invalid. Thank you very much, but it's unnecessary. Remus? You can save your breath, Mr. Maltz. I'm gonna move that crane. No, you save yours. Let's get down to business now. You know what I'm talking about. You mean you want to sell? I turned you down yesterday. I can assure you I won't be back tomorrow. Well, I'm not even going to ask the reason for the sudden change. Don't. All right. Now, if I remember correctly, our firm offer was 26,000 for the store and the land types. It was 26.5, I'll take 30, not a penny less. Out of the question, no, no, maybe 27, but that's my last offer. Don't trifle with me, Remus. Yours is not the only slaughterhouse in town. 28,000, that's fair enough. All right, agree. 30,000. In cash by three o'clock today. Impossible, the papers have to be drawn up. The papers have been sitting in your office for a long time. Three o'clock. Oh, hi. You realize this is a highly impractical and unorthodox way of doing business. My father was orthodox. My mother was practical. I am neither one. You'll have the money by three o'clock. I'll see you then. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. give you good service. I'm sure we'll be able to find something around here. Something with style, a little power under the hood. Listen, don't try to sell a salesman what you couldn't sell a yokel. This one here. Just what I had in mind. Sure, sure, sure. What's that? Seatbelt. Oh, seatbelt. There you are. Who drove this car last, Houdini? It's automatic. Automatic. <clears throat> what was the last car you owned? Uh, Studebaker, 1937. I'll take it. Enough hot water, is that it? Oh, no. Too much hot water. <laughs> Too much. Then? This. What, what for? 
It's two months' rent. You going somewhere? Somewhere. But but you're coming back. No. Listen, I'm sorry about it, but I you see. No, no, it's all right. It's just that I don't like having new people come in, you know. I, I don't know if they're gonna be friendly. I, I don't know if I'm gonna like them, they're gonna like me, you know. I know you. Nice of you to say that. Well, it's just how I feel. To think I never knew that all these years. Maybe I should have taken a trip a long time ago. I am. Um... Good luck. Hiam. Um... What are you going to do with all your stuff? Give it to an old friend. Oh. You. Doug, what do you want to do? I told you already. I don't blame you for anything. No, no. Blame me for all of it. But some other time. Now, just tell me. Is this what you want to do? Really? You've made your mind up? There's no talking you out of it. You've thought about this. Your grip unless you want to hold it on your lap all the way to the border. What's this? In some circles, it's known as an automobile. Is it yours? Where'd you buy it? Can you drive it? It's for us. Two traveling men. I like to think of it as a getaway car. I don't think you should do it. Why not? It's different for you. You got responsibilities. Two to be exact. You and me. Only now, I've been involuntarily relieved of my responsibility for you. And given enough time, I'm sure they'll want to relieve me of my responsibility for me. I don't think I want that to happen. How do you open this thing? Oh. What about the store? What store? Remus? It wasn't exactly Macy's. Well, we have time enough for me to pack a few things, get rid of a few things. Hi, am. Hmm? What? You thought about this. Sure, this is really what you want to do. Made your mind up. No talking you out of it. It's very well put, wise guy. <laughs> Listen, if you really want to go, what are we driving for? Why don't we fly? Well, at my age, my arms would get tired. All right, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you know how to drive? Of course I can. What do you think I'm doing? Terrific. Mr. Fox. I know, I know. You're sorry. You didn't understand. You had no idea what kind of a man he was, and uh, if there's anything you could do, you'd be only too happy to make amends. May I come in, please? Sure, sure. Where are they, Mr. Fox? I see. You know perfectly well who I mean. Mr. Mosh was to have the boy at the home five hours ago. I've been calling all morning and no answer. Oh, my God, the man's uncontrollable. Well, don't feel bad. He doesn't listen to me either. You call the police? No. Good. 
Not good. I was supposed to report in three hours ago. If we don't find them, I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay, okay, come on. I'm hungry. Are we gonna stop for dinner? What's this? Dried provisions. Dried provisions? We have a long trip ahead of us. That stuff lasts a long time. <laughs> Look at this. Dried fruit, powdered milk, dried beef. I'll never go to the bathroom again. That'll get us to Canada a few minutes earlier. Can I look? Sure. Is this a lot of money? It's a lot of money. You had the store your whole life. Maybe you didn't get enough. You see that as my whole life? No. If you never, for as long as you live, measure a man's life by how much money he makes, then you'll be a lot better off when it comes time to make friends. I haven't done too bad, have I? That's what we're going to find out. I'll be right back. Jay. I am. not in. Thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Mulch, you know Mr. Mulch? Certainly. He's a lovely man. He gave me this chair. Why? Because he couldn't get it into the station wagon. The what? The station wagon. The station wagon? Yeah, I just said that. He can't even drive. Well, you could have fooled me. You have any idea where he's going? I don't know nothing. Well, he's got a lot of other stuff in there. Maybe he wants to give it all to you. He already did. Maybe I want to take it away. <laughs> you try. What are you going to do about it? Tell Hyam. You don't even know where he is. In Canada. Thank you. It's a great sound, huh? Sure. You're tired and that's supposed to keep you awake. If it'll work for the dead, I suppose it'll work for me. I could drive, you know. No, no, no. It's too much of a risk. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Wide awake. Look, will you turn off the music? It's distracting.
sonny boy. Wake up, you're not at the Waldorf is over. Ow. Dried fruit again for breakfast? No, no, no special today. We're going to take a chance and get a real breakfast. You look like you can use some nutritious food. You feeling okay? Never better. You sure? I just said so, didn't you hear me? Move over. The answer is no. Hey, I got enough trouble just catching the people you're putting back on the streets. Yeah, Bill, I'm not asking for a favor. I'm pleading. Yeah. Now, look, you don't understand. I'm desperate. Now, what do you want me to do? Get on my hands and knees. Yeah. All right, it's an old man and a boy. They're not criminals. Now, I repeat, they are not criminals. They're headed for Canada in a station wagon. They could be in the Seattle area any time now. now. I want you to keep an eye out for them. Yeah. yeah. Bill, I'll make it up to you. I promise. Okay, thanks. Either you catch him nicely or we do in our way, which is not so nice. You're doing him a favor. <laughs> yeah, some favor. He couldn't start all over again. Not now. You're doing the right thing. I could have taken him across the border. Help him get set up. You'd be disbarred, ruin your career. What career? There wouldn't have been a career in the first place if it wasn't for Heim. He put me through law school, working in a store. Do you believe he could start a new life? Well, you know him now. What do you think? I guess he could. Are you going to ask for him? Sure. It'd be a lot simpler if I just looked for another kind of work. Let's quit. I don't have to. When the agency finds out I didn't turn in Mr. Morse, they'll probably fire me. Listen, there's an old adage about being sorry for saying too much on occasion and, uh, and thanks. And, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. I think you're finished. So do I. My guess is the bloodhounds are out already. For one kid? And one old man. You really think they're looking for us? Want to go back for dessert? No. From freezing to death. Get some warm clothing. Get a house, maybe, with a fireplace. Near a lake, near a school. I thought I was going to get a job. You'll finish school. What do you want to do? Count towels the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't help but notice how loaded the back of your wagon is. I wonder if you can see through your rearview mirror. Oh, oh I... you're right. I can. This is foolish. <laughs> Why don't you redistribute the load so you can get a clear line of vision? Of course, officer. Uh, Doug, uh, go on back there and see if you can lay things out a little better, huh? Come on. May I see your license and registration, please? License. It has to be in the glove compartment. Uh, it's got to be there. Here's the ownership. I haven't had it very long, but long enough to know I was stuck. <laughs> and your license, please. License. Is. I think it's in my wallet. Wait. Just... Wait a minute. <laughs> Here it is. It's a terrible picture. I wanted to have it taken over, but they wouldn't let me. They said the trouble was in the face, not the camera. Your license. License. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, though. Wait. Uh, uh, uh. I, I, uh, I'm afraid I left it home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, mister. You wait right here. I'm going to check. Yes, sir. What did you do? Go. What did you do? Go. What are you doing? Come on. What are you, crazy? his radio yet. What did you do back there, for God's sake? I cut his gas line. You what? I think. You mean you don't even know? I'm not a mechanic. What'd you expect? Okay, okay, Mr. George Graft. Now we're really into it up to our necks. We had no choice. I had to go run away with a regular Dillinger, a gangster. All of a sudden, I'm the bad guy. Who knew I was traveling with Jack the Ripper? So what was I supposed to do? Stand there while he discovered that you haven't driven a car since Hitler invaded Poland? All right, all right, all right. No sense us arguing. It's just hope. We make the border before they find us. Hi, I'm what? I think I'm getting scared. Yeah, I think maybe we better get off the main roads. It'll be fine. starting there. No, I'm okay. But you look tired. You need a good rest. Oh, no, I feel fine. I just don't want you catching cold. Not now. We'll get you bundled up, get you someplace nice and warm. I won't be cold. But you could use a good night's sleep. You'll need your strength. No, I feel great. Me too.
Excuse me. Uh, we would like to rent the cabin. You got eight bucks, you got a cabin. Pay up front. Eight dollars. We were planning to camp out tonight, but I didn't realize it was so tough to find the spot. Besides, I need a warm place for the boy. He's got a cold coming on. Eight. Thank you. Well, it's pretty lucky for you. It's going to rain like crazy pretty soon. How can you tell? Oh, it's an old, old Indian trick. I watch the 10 o'clock news. Here's your key. You have cabin number 16. That's the one where the roof doesn't leak. Thank you. We'll be leaving very early in the morning. I hope you like wet roads. I better call him. Position with 468 to control. Suspects located. We're only 165 miles away from the Canadian border. Hi, em. Fine. Fine. We'll have lunch there tomorrow. business we're going to look for? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, let me see. A uh, um, store of some kind. Uh, mining supplies. They're still mining up there? Whale meat. Whale meat. We'll buy it by the ton and we'll freeze it and sell it to the Eskimos. If I can get along with anybody, I'll get along with Eskimos too. No money. We'll take back furs. And then we're in the fur business. That's nice. Feeding one people, clothing another. That's what I call being useful. Little money coming in. Maybe have some time to look for some gold. Always wanted to look for gold. Shake hands with people, get to know them better, maybe even run for mayor one day. Turn out the light, Doug, and we'll talk again in the morning. Grandpa? Love you.
Ja. You owe me. No. I haven't even started to figure how you're going to pay this back. Oh, anything. I mean, whatever I can. Tell me. We found them. Small cabin motel. A couple of hours away. Come on. And you've got to forgive me for repeating myself, but that's what an old man does. He repeats himself. So you understand. Don't get mad. Do you want, really want to go to Canada? Yeah. We better get out of here. The police are outside. <laughs> Jay, let me in. Hi. Come on, it's Jay. Hey, wait a minute. Hi, let me in, will you? Doug? out that way. Woods, the railroad runs through about a mile north of here. You all right? I'm fine. Keep going. What? You hear it? It's a train. Doug, listen to me. It's up to you. Whatever you say, hop a train. It's all we have left. Yeah. All right. Now, oh, you start running about the fourth car from the end. And as soon as your hand gets on the ladder, Pull your feet up off the ground as soon as you can. Your hands will do the rest. Don't let go. How do you, how do you know all this? I didn't come out to California in a limousine. That's it. I see you. I'm scared. So am I. Where are you going to be? Right behind.
my own right. Sorry, Doug. I really am. Here. What's this? Take it. Take it. It's money. It's green. Take it. No. Take it. You got to. Take it. You got to go. You got to go. You can't stay around here. I'm not going anywhere. You can't stay here for whose sake. That's what you want. Go. You got to beat them. It doesn't matter. I got lots of time. Doug. principle all wrong, Hiam. The principle is life. It's the only one that counts. It doesn't matter anymore where you are, Hiam. It doesn't change. Hiam? Hiam? Okay, I think I'll get an ambulance. Yeah, good. So we're going back. I am. All right, we'll go back. We'll give them a fight like they never saw. Listen, I got money now, a bundle. <laughs> and this one, in a few years, will be a man. He'll be able to do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> Jay, do you honestly think anybody would ever adopt him from that home? Not a chance. Look at him, skinny, a bag of bones. And a bum, too. Who <laughs> would want me? That's right, a bum. Can't even take inventory. <laughs> a real bum. Every weekend, he can come down and help out around the store on weekends. Help me up. No, no, let's wait for the end. No, no, come on. Please. Help me up. Come on. That's better. Thank you. So, got money now, eh? <laughs> In a few years, you'll have all the years in the world to do whatever you want to do. Everything. In the meantime, that will give me a chance to start things rolling for you. Not a bad deal, <laughs> Which is only my pleasure. Because it is a pleasure. And I'm not talking to you. I'm a pleasure. 